Okay, so I have a question for you. Which would you rather watch? A video that has good audio but bad picture, or a video that has bad audio but good picture? Yeah, I thought so. Hi everyone, welcome to Palta Tech. Today's video is on an extremely important topic. Audio. I will tell you straight up that I think audio is 60% of the experience of watching a good video. Today's video is part of my ongoing series on videography and is designed to get you up to speed on the audio features on the Fujifilm camera. The cameras that I'll be discussing today are the Fujifilm X-T3 and X-T4. On both cameras, the microphones are located right here on either side of the top viewfinder area. On both cameras, you you can plug an external microphone into a standard mic jack located on the left side of each camera. And both cameras allow you to see your audio levels. And the way you turn that on is you go into the wrench menu setting right here, into where it says screen setup, scroll down, and choose DISP custom setting, and make sure that mic level is checked. Something very important to keep in mind is that if you have large indicators mode turned on, your audio levels will disappear from the screen. And even if you go to large indicators display setting, there is no option to turn this on. This is a huge oversight on the part of the Fujifilm camera system, and I really hope that Fujifilm fixes this with a firmware update. In addition to being able to see your audio levels, you can also monitor them with a pair of headphones. There is a head phone jack located right on the left side of the camera right here. Now on the X-T4 camera, they decided to take the headphone jack out. <sighs> And so you either have to purchase the additional battery grip, which has a built-in headphone jack right here, or you could use the included dongle that Fujifilm provides with the X-T4, which connects right to the USB-C port and then connects into your headphones. Now the audio settings are located in the video menu section of each camera. On the X-T3, simply go to the movie camera icon and scroll down until you get to the audio setting option. This will then take you into a special menu for your audio settings. On the Fujifilm X-T4, you have a dedicated audio icon right here with exactly the same settings, except for one new setting that is specific to the X-T4. And that is the mic jack setting, which was introduced with the X-T4. It basically allows you to tell the camera whether or not you're connecting an external microphone to the camera or connecting an external device that's using a line input. Now, in almost every case, you will want to keep this set to mic. Now the first two options have to do with setting the levels of your audio. We'll get back to that in just a moment. You'll notice that there is a setting for mic level limiter. This causes your camera to automatically scan the audio while it's being recorded and listen for sounds that are too loud. It will then automatically reduce the sound levels so that they don't distort. So what exactly is audio that's too loud? Well audio is measured in decibels. It's a scale that has has negative numbers on the bottom, then a zero, and then some positive numbers on the top. When you are recording your audio, you are always wanting to record within the negative area, the, the negative decibels. Now the golden rule, the one that you must always follow when you are recording audio, is that you never, ever want to go at or above zero decibels. Never go above zero. If your audio levels hit that level or go above it, they will distort and they will be ruined. This is called clipping your audio. And frankly, it is extremely difficult, if not impossible, to repair badly clipped audio later on in post-production. Don't ever clip your audio, ever. It'll make me mad, bad, and sad. Just think of it this way. Recording good audio is kind of the opposite of what you want to do in life. When it comes to audio, it's much better to be negative than positive. So this mic level limiter will constantly be listening to your audio. And if it's approaching or will go past that zero decibel range, then the camera will automatically lower down the audio so that it stays below that danger level. Now this setting may sound like something you wanna leave on all the time, right? No, you don't. 
And this is because you really should be adjusting and taking care never to clip your audio in the first place. The mic limiter on Fujifilm cameras is very basic and it has no real configuration settings. Think of it as a blunt instrument and I would say you would only ever really want to use it as a last resort. If you're in a run and gun shooting situation and you know you're going to have volume levels all over the place. It is always much better to add a limiter adjustment in post-production to your audio than it is to use this little limiter that's built into the camera. I usually keep it off. Next we have wind filter and that's designed to cut some of the audio frequencies that are associated with wind noise. You know, like this. Now, if you're using the built-in on-camera microphone and you happen to be outdoors in a windy situation, then turning this on may provide some benefit. However, if you are using an external microphone plugged into the camera, such as this Rode mic, then you wanna be using a dead cat to help reduce the wind noise, right? This is much better than using the little filter on the Fujifilm camera. Next is the low cut filter. Now this is simply a filter that helps reduce the mechanical type of hum you get with things like refrigerators or ceiling fans or heating vents and so forth. Typically this is lower frequency noise and this setting is designed to help reduce that. Like the other settings though, it is often better to apply this in post-production and I never turn this one on either. Last we have the headphones volume setting, which is self-explanatory, allows you to turn up and down the volume in headphones that you connect into the camera. Now, if you're fairly new to this, what I am about to tell you now will be the single most important advice that you are going to hear in this video. And that is never, and I mean never, ever, put on a pair of headphones like this and then plug it into your camera straight away. Ever, never. And the reason why is that you don't know what your volume levels are. You don't know there might be some kind of a, of a feedback thing going on. There could be an electrical pop and you could permanently damage your ears. Always start with your headphones like this, then plug your headphones into the camera, then make sure it's not blasting out of here or there's any loud noise or anything, then slowly bring them up to your ears just like that. Very important safety tip, no joke. Speaking of volume settings, let's now talk about the internal and the external microphone level adjustments. Obviously the first one controls the audio levels of the onboard microphone on the camera. There are three settings to this, auto, manual, and off. When it's in auto, the camera will then try and do its best to balance out the audio based on the various volume levels during your scene. Again, if you're in kind of a rushed run and gun shooting situation where the volume of your talent is all over the place, then yeah, leaving it on auto would be my recommendation. However, in many cases, you are gonna wanna flip it over to manual and set your audio levels from there. You will see on the back of the camera, a decibel meter. First of all, notice how it hits that zero, it immediately turns red, see, that's too loud. So you lower it down by using the buttons on the D-pad until it's kind of above minus 20, like this. Test, one, two, up, oh, that's still too loud. Let's bring it down a little bit more. Testing, one, two, three, four. Hi everybody, welcome to Pal to Tech. That would be about where I would put it. It's always better to err on the side of caution and record it just a tad lower than it would be to clip the audio and hit that zero decibel level. So I would keep it average somewhere between minus 20 and zero. Now keep in mind that when you plug an external microphone into your camera, the internal microphone, the onboard microphone is no longer operating, right? As soon as you plug the external mic into the Fujifilm, the Fujifilm says, oh, you're using an external mic. Well, I don't need the onboard mic and it turns it off, which is kind of what you want, you're gonna now be using this mic. However, because of this, you need to be very careful that you correctly set your levels for your external microphone and check, 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 check this before you start shooting every time. Let me give you an example of how you can get really screwed by this. Here I have a cheap little lav mic, okay? I'm gonna plug the lav mic as an external microphone into the camera. Let's say I wasn't paying attention. I didn't watch the Pal Detect video. I didn't know any better. 
I am now shooting, okay? So here's the problem. Look at the levels. You see that on the screen? Have a look at that. There's no audio being recorded at all. This cheap little lav mic, okay, has a switch on it because it's meant for both smartphones and cameras. I have to remember to turn the switch like this. Test, test, test. There we go, see that? Check this stuff. The number one mic I think is the absolute best for onboard third-party microphones for Fujifilm is this Rode Video Mic Pro. It will vastly improve the quality. Oh, let me show you. Okay, so here's how I sound with the regular camera built-in microphone. Not so good. And here's what I sound like with the Rode Video Mic Pro attached to the Fujifilm camera. It's better. It's not as good as my studio mic, but it's definitely better. And here's what I sound like with my regular studio Video mic, which is much closer to me. Again, the golden rule of capturing good audio is to get the microphone as close to the talent as you can. I just called myself the talent. Again, this is just a basic audio tutorial, so I'm not gonna get into comparison of all these microphones. However, I will tell you three decent microphones that I think will work on Fujifilm cameras. The first is the one I've already discussed, the Rode Video Mic Pro. The second is this Deity V Mic D3 Pro, which is a great microphone, has a lot of wonderful features. And then we have the much smaller Rode Rode Video Micro, which is more compact, you know? This microphone is definitely not as good as this one, but obviously budget is a consideration as well. Then there's a whole slew of lav microphones, and I'll have a link to a few of those in the description down below. And finally, if you really want to get good quality audio, then you're going to need to get your audio away from the camera altogether and record it separately. This is because the circuitry on the camera doesn't do the greatest job in processing audio in the first place. It uses is what's called a preamp, which on a camera isn't very good. This is a much better preamp compared to the one that's on the camera and audio that's funneled through here will sound better. And products like these connected to a lavalier mic that's on your talent will give you much better sounding audio. And some of these special audio recorders have special plugs on the back that allow you to connect very good quality microphones with what are called XLR connections. As I said in the beginning of this video, audio is 60% of the experience. And no matter what your budget, even if you use, you know, the onboard mic on the camera, I hope that you now have a better understanding of the audio settings and options available to you on the Fujifilm camera, and that you are always trying to capture the best quality audio that you can. Well, thank you so much for watching, and I hope this video has been helpful to you. If it has, be sure to give it the like and subscribe, and I will see you in another video again very soon. Take care.